Hi everyone, welcome back to another great video and I hope you've all been well since the last time I posted and if you are new here, hello, welcome to the crazy but positive side of YouTube. My name is Savita, the star seed of what I do on this channel is basically spread the information and awareness on what I and fellow human beings strongly feel that we come from. Throughout history, there has been a missing link, that 1% from the primates and it's like, what's that 1% that makes us so different? Well, this is it. Before I dive into the actual information on the galactic history, I wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone between the viewers the supporters my fellow guest appearances on this channel for motivating me and giving me the positive feedback and ambition to get this stuff out there and i wanted to give another shout out personally to lily nova because this is her sweatshirt the guest on this channel that actually captures a lot of ufo footage and if you would like to get yourself a fellow star c sweatshirt that's fat sweater weather sweater weather vibes i will go ahead and link that down in the description i'm gonna change my shirt because it is hot and i cannot do the rest of this video in this sweatshirt I'm sorry, Lily, it's, it's just hot. So I'm gonna change and come right back. I feel so much better now. Anyways, if you happen to click on this video and you don't know whether you are a starseed yet or what a starseed is, I'll put the card in here so you can go ahead and watch it. Starseeds are basically alien souls and if you feel that you've always been gravitated towards the stars and don't align with traditional norms, believe in the paranormal, chances are you are a starseed. Another video I have after that are the awakening stages, stages that you happen to go through if you are indeed going through a starseed awakening. I'm not a professional, but I do strongly feel that those stages roughly go in order and are very accurate. There are a lot of websites I use the main ones which consisted of debbysolaris.com Gaia, the show initiation Those two were the main two bridged for this video, but there has been a lot of minor websites here and there that depicted the differences and the timelines of all this. It's it's hard to follow. After a while, it, it makes sense, honestly. I will do my best to put that in the description. <laughs> because it's a lot. What I will go ahead and dive into first is the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is like our mother and the Milky Way Galaxy is like our father. We have to have dualities of everything, positives and negatives, pros, cons, male, female. There's always two sides to every story, right? What bridges these two galaxies is something called an Antari Stargate, which is guarded by Mantis people. Quite a few people claim to have seen mantis people before. I do know somebody who has seen mantis people. This individual is not tech savvy, had visions of mantis people way before I even brought up this whole concept. And what they saw was basically a blockage of literally light silhouettes and they couldn't go through a portal. What's that blockage is probably what's going on right now in our world. Next, I'll talk about the Draconians. So the Draconians are a whole species sent here as a damnation from another universe as most of them created mass Massive destruction. So they were sent to the constellation of Draco. Draconians were mostly dragon beings. had an upper echelon kind of class, like upper, middle, lower class, were the ones that balanced the light and dark and stayed out of conflict. However, it's the middle class of Draconians, also known as the reptilians, the typical reptilians that we all think about, you know, negative and very destructive, kicked out of their Draconian constellation since they ruined a previous universe. The lower class of Draconians were the reptiles that were genetic results of experimentations on Earth. The dinosaurs were an experiment, supposedly, of trying to have high intelligent reptiles reptilian beings, but it backfired immensely, sent a, a meteor down to extinguish all of it because they realized how terribly they effed up and how destructive high intelligent reptilian lower class beings can be. They retreated some and took them to the lower class echelon while the rest of them were immensely destroyed. The upper class was like, all right, we're done with you. Get out of here. And they kicked out the reptilians. Reptilians are warriors and master geneticists. So they decided to conquer other worlds, bring darkness to the galaxy, while other alien species brought light. They were basically on their own. They realized after a while, oh snap, we're running out of we're running out of resources and we have to find more or else we're all gonna die. Again, they're destructive and only thing for themselves. The reptilians were around when the Lyra and Vagan constellations evolved. They came across their constellations they're like, mm. we can totally utilize these resources. The best way I can bridge this story is to Avatar. 
let's say that the avatar beings, the blue monkeys, are like the Lyran people, while the military were the reptilians. Lyra was the first light beings that were made in our universe. So there were Lyrans and Vegans in Lyra constellation overall, which had the bird and cat people. In July of 2021, the Australian government declassified a 50 plus page UFO document of a case that happened between the 50s and 70s where somebody claimed that the occupants of a craft had cat-like faces, which again are what the Lyran species are depicted to have. They were full of love and light, very grounded, very spiritual beings. A lot of Lyran starseeds in particular, they never feel that they have a home. They will just always feel like that there's something missing and that they know never belong. They can never hold a job. They can never hold a relationship. They're always tripping over nothing or super clumsy. Those are some big signs for Lyran starseeds. The Lyran and Draconian War, going on 600 million years ago, crafts appeared in the Lyra constellation. They came down and they were informing the Lyrans that they were basically running out of resources. So the Lyrans were like, okay, well, we can show you around. Big mistake, because the Draconians witnessed the Lyrans' weaknesses and how they had no self-defense. So they took advantage of it, stripped them of all their resources, forced sex slavery, controlled them, and then destroyed their 14 planets in the Lyran system, which is almost like the Avatar tree scene. So basically the reptilians went ahead and destroyed the Lyra constellation, when all the Lyrans wanted to do was to share the love and light and give them a place to live, but they pretty much said, no, 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 we're not sharing this, we're owning this, and completely destroyed their constellation. At that point, a lot of Lyran people migrated and fled their constellation into the Pleiadian constellation, the Andromeda constellation, not galaxy, but constellation, because there's two different Andromedas. Then they also had Vagans, which went to Sirius and Orion. So next, what I'm going to talk about while we pause on that are the Arcturian beings. Arcturian beings are not descendants of the Lyran and Vagan refugees, and they look the least humanoid. During the initial creation of the galaxy, the Arcturians were sent by the Galactic Council to be the overseers and spiritual guardians of the other star systems in this galaxy. The blue planet orbiting the red giant star of Arcturus in the Booties constellation is mostly where they reside. A lot of Arcturian beings are also rumored to be blue or a very light gray-blue kind of skin pigmentation. Granted, of course, other starseed lineages such as Lyrans and Syrians can be blue, but Arcturians are usually the most common gods in ancient human religions to be blue, such as the Hindu gods. We also have Egyptian gods such as Amun-Ra that had blue skin pigmentation, and the blue skin pigmentation can be because they don't have oxygen where they come from. Hence why some of our blood is rumored to be blue, but once it's exposed to oxygen, it's red. The Arcturians also have a starship stationed near Earth. Souls are brought to their starships during their dream state, which I have a guest, Mike Botowitz, if you want to watch the interview with him, I'm pretty sure he's been on this ship. Edgar Casey stated that they are the most advanced alien civilization in the galaxy. Mastered many aspects of today's modern age metaphysical beliefs, and they are well known for healing. They vested many resources to defend Earth from reptilians and greys, fast forward to now. Arcturians are known as the art of the mind, which is technological innovation and creative pursuits. Arcturian star sees incarnated on Earth, and they tend to be gifted as ambassadors, technicians, and healers. Three to four they're about three to four feet tall, slender, pale green bluish skin, three fingers, they're telekinetic, they have telepathy, and they have large almond colored eyes, and they live up to 400 years. They only get involved for certain reasons, they don't get involved all the time, but only get involved when absolutely necessary. Take turns with many duties, one of which is processing souls that pass through the Arcturus Stargate, a different Stargate, healing damaged souls in the Crystal Temples. Apparently the Arcturus Stargate is where most people when they pass, they go, which is like heaven, to cleanse their souls and get ready for the next part of life. It functions as an energy gateway where humans pass during death and rebirth. Life review, goals, choice of what your next incarnation is, etc. The Arcturus Stargate was heavily attacked by the Draconian forces. So at this point, they destroyed Lyra, moved on, found the Booties constellation and wanted to control it. But the Arcturians were like, ah and stopped them real quick. Of course, not all reptilians were destroyed, so they fled again and moved on. They had no success with the Arcturus Stargate, so they eventually came across an Eternity Stargate in the Orion constellation. 
Orion is a very hectic duality kind of constellation. It's almost like the cantina in Star Wars where there's so many types of beings. There's about 75% Vegans, 11% Lyrans, 14% negative species, which consists of the Greys and Reptilians. The Lyran and Vegan refugees that reside in the Orion constellation tend to live in the belt, whereas the rest of the Orion species, such as the Greys and Reptilians, are on the outside star systems, such as Rigel and Betelgeuse. Orion beings tend to have a reputation for possessing aggressive nature as they've been involved with so many wars that have occurred in their star system. Again, it's like Star Wars. And even though this pattern of behavior is somewhat been simmered down, many people on Earth have awoken since the shifting of this Orion-like consciousness. Orion beings can also be seven feet tall, and they have a symbiotic relationship between consciousness and technology. And they're also neighbors to Zeta Reticuli. And when I first found out that I was an Orion starseed, it was spine chilling that Zeta Reticuli is nearby. I also have the Orion constellation on my shoulder. I was like six. I always had nightmares of, or just fears of these kind of beings and I couldn't describe what they were. And anytime I tried to talk about aliens, I would just start crying, It'd make me tear up and I would have tears running down my face. And again, back to Lily Nova did a minor reading on me over Instagram. And she even pointed out that there's trauma from Orion that have to do with the grays. And I'm like, whoa. Snap, crackle, pop, man. Sounds kind of accurate to me. So when it comes to the grays, the grays are basically like the henchmen that do the dirty work of the reptilians. That's why some people claim to have abductions and claim to have been worked on or part of uh, reproduction groups. And again, not all grays are bad, but the ones that are torturous and like you can sense their negativity, those are the ones you have to look out for. Those are the ones that are working with the reptilians. And I also remember, remember being told above before coming down here, I've been having downloads to where I was told, as long as we find ourselves, we outrank them. Like we can fight them easily, but the reptilians are in control of the government and all this other stuff. And that the greys do their dirty work so the reptilians can remain in hiding. They want to take our DNA, cause there's something in our DNA that makes us special and they want to breed and make their own army per se. That's why there's a lot of hybrid programs that you may, may have heard of, is because the reptilians tell the greys to do that. The Orion War started during the dinosaur time period, which pertains to looking within yourself to mend and heal all the species together and heal the war. It is being held within, and if we start to open and receiving messages, we might be able to bring all the light together. This is based off of Star Wars that always had polarity conflicts, AKA the melting pot or cantina light versus dark. Three groups were formed in Orion, had the dominant empire, which had the greys or treaties to deals with the government, the resistance to the empire, and the rest. Some rebellious pirates from Orion exchanged technology with the government on Earth to abduct people for genetic material. So next we're gonna talk about the Andromeda beings themselves. The life forms that consisted of humanoids, light blue skinned with jumpsuits and they were telepathic. They had two humanoid types, the Caucasian type that's also known as Nordic or early Mediterranean and they also had some Asian looking beings, long and thin arms, legs, fingers, and toes. Many Andromedan beings, mainly women, held positions of leadership. Andromedan star seeds are gifted in healing, creativity, whether it's art and music. I know someone who's personally an Andromedan star seed, and he is a musician. Rumored to have been the winged beings drawn by the Sumerians, also rumored to be archangels. Descendants of Lyrans that fled from the Lyran constellation resided in Andromeda to help fight and stand back to the reptilians. And they visited Earth when Syrians were first arriving to Earth. Syrians, they stem from the refugees of Vega and Lyrans from the Lyra constellation that was destroyed. And they originate from the binary star system of Candace Major. And they're one of the first alien civilizations to visit our solar system right in the midst of Lemuria, Mu, and Atlantis. Syrians came to the Mayans, Sumerians, and Egyptians to provide advanced technology and medical information, as well as construct the pyramids, 
which was after the downfall of Atlantis because people who left Atlantis went to Egypt. They blended some of their DNA with the less advanced humanoid species. Physical appearances of only humanoid Syrians on Earth were darker skin, hair, and eyes, etc. And they were smaller than the Lyrans, but as they adapted on Earth, their skin became lighter. Committed to helping, saving, and serving the human race on Earth. They're a watery, dreamy race that were evolved versions of dolphins and whales, and that's where mermaids, whales, dolphins, and other porpoise beings come from. They help Earth by disguising as cetaceans in the sea, so it's more subtle as they try not to be involved in our evolution. Even though they really, really want to, they can't intervene too much. It's almost like when you watch movies of time travel, they can't intervene because it'll ruin everything. So next we're gonna talk about the Pleiadians. They stemmed from Lyra. And when Lyrans fled from the Lyran constellation with assistance taught from the Arcturians. Pleiadians originate from the planet Ida, from the Pleiades cluster near the Taurus constellation. The, the Taurus constellation and also the Pleiadians are known as the seven sisters in Greek mythology and they brought creativity. And if you look at the logo of the Subaru, it represents that as well. They're silent helpers, but also the most recent kind of starseed or light beings to visit Earth. They're willing to help, but not to the point where they mess with our own evolution. Compared to Arcturians, they don't like getting involved unless absolutely necessary. Pleiadians will get involved if they have to. They're a peaceful race of extraterrestrials that have a spot in the Galactic Council. They've undergone an enormous calling to reach higher planes of spirituality and fight the dark side. And they're concerned of our misuse of nuclear weapons and other sciences today that are catastrophic, especially since we lost our spiritual center. They're concerned because we might destroy our planet and ourselves because of this. That's why some orbs are claimed to be seen over nuclear areas because they don't want us to basically ruin ourselves. Like they brought us here over thousands of years our ancient civilizations were super grounded and super spiritual but over time once we got once roswell happened and the share of technology with the grays occurred nuclear weapons and lots of weapons of mass destruction were formed and we just lost touch with that Blah. Blah. so next we're gonna have a condensed timeline Earth was a new place to gather all the DNA in case of a bigger war, which is what's happening now. About a million years ago, the Ice Age began. Homo sapiens, the first version of us before the 1% kick that made us now, were all over the planet, and the configuration started coming here because they noticed that there were actually potential human beings on this planet. So they came here to evolve people faster than ever before through reproduction and passing on their DNA to us, and that's why that 1% makes us so different than the average primate. The first type of beings that came here on Earth way back in the Ice Age were the Nemnir, which were big, hairy beasts, almost like Bigfoot or Sasquatch people. And they were giants who arrived to protect and code the ice of Antarctica, storing the seeds of the past on knowledge. The reason why water is so important is because our DNA and their DNA is passed down through these molecules of hydrogen and oxygen. And there's a reason why water is a powerful molecular compound that exists throughout the universe. And these Nemnir were protecting the, the top secret information that all the Galactic Federation put here to basically make us us. And that's what brought the reptilians and the greys here is because they want to get their hands on that, but they can't figure out how. Losers. After a while, the Homo sapiens sapien DNA was introduced us. Then the first human civilization begins, 500,000 BC. The soft here were the next beings. They were the first reptilians on earth, but not bad reptilians, good reptilians, because again, there's dualities and everything. They were the first reptilians on earth and they arrived in the Middle East, Asia and Africa to pass the info of the snake. They taught women how to become shamans and that's why women were highly prized and highly valuable. They were always the healers and the guides for their people. In the beginning of Earth's history, the Galactic Federation thought it'd be a genius idea to develop two major civilizations on Earth that would represent the divine feminine and masculine, just like the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy. So what they ended up making was Atlantis in the Atlantic Ocean and Mu, short for Lemuria, 
in the Pacific Ocean in order to replicate and see if these civilizations could live the same lifestyle similar to the other star beings outside of this planet. Many souls who decided to reincarnate at Atlantis were because they wanted to work on their divine masculine qualities and work with the technology that they had, as compared to other souls chose to incarnate at Mu or Lemuria because they wanted to work with their divine feminine side and work at the spiritually oriented side of these people. Very few, though, have chosen to have both incarnations, and it's very hard to recall these memories sometimes for some, as some of the events that took place at these continents were very traumatic and very emotional. And then about 200,000 BC, we have the Alathir, which arrived in the Pacific and Indian Ocean to protect the water while the Nemnir disappeared. And then the Mu civilization begins. Lemuria was the mother god consciousness that was based on the development of human spirituality rather than the integration of technology. But Lemuria, or Mu, was developed by a lot of the star beings, and it was a very tropical and aquatic kind of environment, just like Hawaii. But they were more peaceful and telepathic creatures that had so much simplicity as they had no desire for aggressive and forceful ways of living. So they spread their vibrational frequencies of love and understanding and care through their Lemurian seed crystals, which also happened to be the way that they powered their ships and transmitted data from their time to the future. It was the way to download and upload information, almost like a time machine or a radio. And they were located near the Hawaiian Islands and Easter Island heads now. At this point, the Ice Age ends and the Nemnir completely disappear and the cold climate completely vanished. So the Alathir, or Mu, could rule. About 20,000 BC, the next group of beings that arrived down from the stars were the Asir, and they're known as the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki apparently came from the Orion constellation, and when they arrived here, and wanted to lead the human race on Earth as well. Of course, there's dualities in everything, so not all Anunnaki were bad, but some of the Anunnaki that were good, you know, gave their information and power to some human civilizations throughout the planet, while other Anunnaki beings wanted to enslave the human race and be their leaders. And they wanted Atlantis to basically step up and be more powerful and take control of the planet. And then the Atlantis civilization begins. Atlantis was formed by some Arcturian and Pleiadian beings, as well as a bit of an influence from the Andromedans. But they were more of a physical place located in the Atlantic Ocean, and they started off as a civilization that had the best of everything on a spiritual and technological level. Like, they had both. As compared to Lemuria, they were more spiritual and not as technological. Atlantis had both. But then the Orion Wars began, and that's when some of the negative factions from Orion infiltrated the government of Atlantis, such as the Anunnaki. And they wanted to basically have Atlantis realize what kind of potential they have and grew their power exponentially to where they got so egotistical of themselves, which ended up wiping out Lemuria. That was the civil war that spiked between Atlantis and Lemuria was because of the influence from the negative Orion factions. Unfortunately, Lemuria was destroyed by Atlantis during this big war, and the Lemurians with their limited technology proved to be no match for the advanced technology of these Atlanteans. After Lemuria fell, Earth plunged from the fifth to the third dimension, as we are still in the third dimension to this day. And then at that point, some of the Atlantis beings fled when it was being destroyed and they migrated to Egypt. In case none of you have ever heard of Dorothy Isaac, I wanted to do a video about her in the future. She is a magnificent soul who in the 70s were able to contact with the beings of light and record so much footage of them on a Super 8 of them moving and dancing at her command. And she went under a hypnotherapy session where basically she mentioned people from Greece and Atlantis where they fell over some kind of war, but they ended up fleeing to Egypt and then South America. So I just wanted to throw this in there as another confirmation from another source that Atlanteans eventually fled to Egypt. And that's where the river civilizations began. And that's where we are now. <sighs> so that's basically the galactic history summed up. It's a lot, but it's an interesting timeline to follow. It makes a lot of sense when you think about it, and there's a, there, there are reasons why all these constellations are mimicked and depicted throughout ancient history. There's no coincidence that there's pyramids in Egypt that mimic the Orion constellation.
There's pyramids in China that mimic the Pleiades constellation. And there's pyramids in South America and I believe Peru that mimic the Sirius constellation. Uh, over time, the star beings came down, merged their DNA and knowledge with us, and then we became Homo sapiens sapiens, which is that 1% that makes us so freaking different than the average primates. And here we are. It's, it, that's pretty much how we've stemmed over thousands of years. There's a reason why ancient civilizations always depicted UFO crafts in the sky and light beings. Like, they can't make that stuff up. Like, there, all this stuff is literally embedded in ancient history, but a lot of people don't want to take the time to do the research themselves like I have. And it's been about six or seven months of research, but hopefully this video was very informative and was a fun ride for you. Hopefully this was a very interesting concept to talk about and to be like, Woo. And I will see y'all in the next video for a secret message that I kind of decoded before I moved that's really gonna blow your minds. And we have more interviews after that. So thank you everyone for staying tuned and thank you for watching. And I hope y'all take care and stay safe. Until next time, bye fellow starseeds. I'll see y'all again.